All right, uh, welcome back everybody to our physics engine programming. So today what we're gonna do is talk about something called inertia. And inertia is the next step we need to take or figuring out an equation for the inertia of our, of our bodies is the next step for finding out how do we rotate these objects. So if you'd like the source code, it's gonna be freely available. I'm gonna have a link in the description below. Um, and that's the source code for the physics library itself, for the flat physics. And also we have a flat library which allows us to uh, quickly and efficiently draw uh, shapes to the screen and have a camera that's uh, able to zoom in and out. So kind of an add-on we created for Monogame to make two-dimensional graphics nice and easy for us to create. Um, so the source code is going to be available as well. But also, if you want to see how any of this was created, including the flat library, you can check my channel. Um, and we go step-by-step -step creating not only the flat library, but also this physics library. All right, so let's start talking about inertia. So in the general sense, inertia, and, and okay, let me, and let me qualify this with, uh, I'm definitely not a physicist or somebody who studied physics uh, with, a college, uh, which, with a college degree or anything like that. I've been kind of studying up a little bit about inertia. And from what I can tell, inertia is basically an object's resistance to change. Or how much does an object or some geometry resist change. So you can think about it, if an object has a lot of inertia and it's moving in a, a certain direction, it's really difficult to change the direction or to even stop the object because it has a lot of inertia. And in the same way, if an object is sitting at rest and it's not moving and it has a lot of inertia, it wants to stay at a resting position and getting it to move is gonna require a lot of effort because it has a lot of inertia. And same thing if an object has a very little inertia, it's easy to change its direction if it's already moving or to make it stop. Or if it's at rest, it's very easy to get it moving in a certain direction because the inertia is so low. Specifically for our engine, we're gonna be talking about rotational inertia. So when we talk about inertia, I'm actually talking about rotational inertia or how how much does an object resist change in its rotation? So if an object's rotating already and it has a lot of rotational inertia, that means it's gonna be harder to make it stop rotating or to slow its rotation. Or if it has very little inertia, it's gonna be really easy to make it rotate or to stop it from rotating because the inertia is so low. And inertia has a lot to do with its mass as well. So if an object has a lot of mass, the inertia will go up as well. There's a direct correlation between the inertia that an object has and its mass. So let's go ahead. Uh, today what we're going to do is actually write the equation for um, our object's inertia. And we have two types of geometry right now, so we have two, or two types of shapes. So we have the circle type and we have the box type. The, uh, the equations for these two types are uh, well documented and you can find those online. All right, so what I'm gonna do is actually bring up this website here. I'm just on Wikipedia and we have a list of moments of inertia. So you can read this first paragraph up here or these first few paragraphs and it gives you a general idea of what the moment of inertia is. And it says, measures the extent to which an object resists rotational acceleration about a particular axis. And that's what we want. We wanna know how much does this body resist uh, rotational acceleration on a certain axis. Now for us, the axis we're talking about is the z-axis. So we're talking about an axis that goes through the center of our circle or through the center of our box bodies. So we can scroll down here and get lots of different equations for the moments of inertia. And the first one we're looking for here is um, a thin solid disk of radius r and mass m. And you can see the z-axis goes right through the center of this circular disk. Okay, and that's exactly what we want. Um, and you can see the different uh, moments of inertia for the different axes. So if we want the z-axis, that's gonna be this one here. And then if we want the x or y axis, that'll be this one here. But we don't really care about the x or y, we just want the z-axis. And so we wanna know how much it rotates uh, about the z-axis. Okay, now if I scroll down even further, we'll get more information about thin rectangular plate. Okay, and that's right here. And you can see about the z-axis, uh, the equation is, is right here and we'll use that for our box bodies. All right, let's go back to our code. I'm gonna go back to our flat bodies and I want to make a static function that's going to calculate the, the moments of inertia or the iner rotational inertia for our bodies. All right, here's our constructor. I'm just gonna go right below this constructor. I'm gonna make a private static function. 
And this is going to return a floating point value. We're going to calculate uh, the rotational inertia. And let's give it a shape type. Uh, so we're just going to do a quick check here. So if the uh, type is a circle, we'll do this. And then if the type is a box, we'll do this. So right now we're only supporting circles and boxes. So if it just so happens that we find another type, I'm going to throw an exception. Okay, and I'm just going to tell it that the uh, the type we're passing in here is not a valid shape type. And so, um, actually, let's add another string here. And we'll just tell it is not a valid shape type. Okay, so let's go back to the website. And let me just check the equation here real quick. All right, so we have the... Uh, the rotational inertia for a thin rectangular plate about the uh, center is 1 12th m times the height squared times the width squared. Okay, and m is the mass of the body. So let's go ahead and type that into our code. All right, so we're going to have 1 12th times the mass. You know what? And uh, actually, now that I'm looking at this, I don't really want this to be a static formula because I want to be able to access the mass and the shape type and the width and the height and the radius, all of that information from the body itself. So let's not make this static. I'm just going to make this a private function that belongs to this particular object. And then we don't have to pass in any parameters here. And what I can do is just determine what the shape type is here directly. So I can just get the shape type from this object. All right, so now I have access to all the, uh, the information that is part of this object. So I have the mass, I have the width, and I have the height and the radius. So let's go ahead and type those in right here. So it's the mass of the object times, and it's going to be the width squared plus the height squared. All right, uh, so that will calculate the box type. In fact, let me go back to make sure I got the equation correct here. So it's 1 12th times the mass times the height squared plus the width squared. Okay, that looks good. Now let's look at the circle type, or the circle rotational momentum calculation. All right, and that's a thin flat disc, I think is what we're looking at here. All right, that's this one. So it has a radius R and a mass of M, and about the Z axis, that's gonna be one half the mass times the radius squared. All right, so let's go ahead and return that. All right, so now we have the rotational inertia calculated. Let's go ahead and make some fields inside our flat body for that. All right, and so right here we have uh, pretty much all the information, the read-only information about the object. Right under area, I want to make a couple more fields. And just like we calculated the mass and the inverse mass, we want to do the same thing here. We want to have the, the inertia and the inverse inertia. So these are going to be read-only fields because they're not going to change once this object has been created. Okay, and let's go back down to our uh, constructor and let's uh, send that information in as well. All right, so right here, let's go ahead and calculate the inertia. And we'll just use the function that we created here. And then I also need to get the inverse inertia. And just like the mass, if the object is static, then we are going to have an inverse inertia of zero. So we did that right here. We determined if the object is static. So if it's not static, we get the inverse. So the inverse inertia. That will just be one over whatever the inertia is. And then otherwise, if it is static, the inverse inertia is going to be zero. And actually, um, I have one more thing I need to correct before I move on. Inside the calculate rotational inertia function, um, I still have this type here, which I don't need. In fact, so instead of providing um, the type there, let's uh, take that out. And we're just going to tell it that the shape type is not valid. Okay, so that should get rid of any errors. Um, let's run it and let's do some testing here real quick. Okay, so I have some boxes and a circle. Um, let's go back to the code and inside the constructor of our flat body, I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. And uh, let's go ahead and find out what we're getting for values for our inertia. So I'm going to add one more object and let's see. Um, and so now it should get to the breakpoint and let's see what it gives us for a value. So we'll put a box there. Okay, and so we are now in our um, code. Let's scroll up here and let's see what it got for the mass and then the inertia. So for the mass, it has 3.32, all right? And then the inertia is getting zero. Okay, and so, okay, so that didn't work. Let's go ahead and check why it's doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart this and we're gonna step through the code. And let's add a body. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a breakpoint here again and let's step through the code and just see what happens. So 
if I placed a body in there. Um, so the mass looks correct. Let's go ahead and, and step into this calculate rotational inertia. Okay, so we're inside the shape type is a circle. It has the mass, but it's saying the radius is zero. So we must be calculating this before we get the radius. Let's go ahead and scroll up and see where we're doing this. Oh, okay, yeah. So the issue being here is that we're we're getting the radius right here, but we're count we're trying to calculate the rotational inertia here. So what we need to do is actually drop this down below where we get the uh, the the shape information. Okay. So now we're getting the shape information, whether that's the width or the height or the radius, and then we're calculating the inertia because we need to actually know what the shape uh, radius is or the shape width and height is, or the shape width and height before we can actually calculate the inertia. Let's go ahead and run that and just see if we get uh, some valid numbers. Okay, so we got some objects in there. Let's put a breakpoint here inside the constructor and I'll just add another object here. Okay, so the mass we're getting uh, looks like a valid result. Um, we have the radius is zero because it's actually a box, but it does have a width and a height, so those look good. And then the inertia looks like we're getting some good values there as well. Okay, so we have the inertia. Let's add a circle, and um, I'm going to put a breakpoint in there again, and let's add a circle and see what we get for that. Okay, so the radius now looks like a valid result. The width and the height should be zero, and the inertia looks like we're getting a good result for that as well. Okay, and then if I scroll down here... Let's see, it's actually calculating the inverse inertia and the inverse mass as well. Okay, okay. so that's pretty much it. I just wanted to, to get the inertia values. Okay, I wanted to be able to calculate the inertia, and then we can start moving on to actually changing our, our formula for resolving collisions to include rotation as well. Now, before we close this out, I'm going to add a couple more bodies to our scene here. Uh, I want to add a couple more static bodies to our scene, and I'm going to put them at slants. So we're gonna have kind of some sloping bodies that are static that we can drop our objects onto. Um, inside of our uh, main game class here, uh, I'm gonna go to the initialization code. Okay, so here's where we initialize the game. And right here we're creating a ground body. And what I wanna do is actually create a couple more bodies um, that are static that we can drop our objects onto to test things out. So right here, let's go ahead and add a few more static bodies. And these are gonna be rectangles. I'm gonna rotate them a little bit so they're on slopes. Okay, so let's create a box body. I'm gonna make the width 20. Uh, so this is gonna be 20, and remember this is a meter, so this is gonna be 20 meters. The height is gonna be two meters, I think. Let's try that and just see what it looks like. Um, now the position, and actually looking at this, I don't know if I really wanna calculate the position right here. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll go ahead and specify the position right here, but I may want to change that code later so we don't do that. So the ground body is placed at uh, zero on the x and the negative ten on the y. Uh, this one, so let's go left on the x ten, so that's going to be a negative ten, and on the y I want to go up ten. I think let's just try that and see where it ends up. Density doesn't really matter. I'll just give it one because it's a static object. Um, is static set to true? The restitution, we'll just put 0.5 for now. Um, and I'm going to pass out a flat body. And this is going to be, I'm going to call this ledge 1 or ledge body 1. And then any error message will pass out here. Okay, and actually error message already defined here, so I don't need to specify that again. Okay, so let's just throw an exception. If there's an error for some reason, we'll just give it the error message. Okay, so now if there's not an error, um, the world, let's go ahead and add this body. We'll just add the ledge body here, so ledge body one. And uh, let's go ahead and run that and just see what it looks like. Oh, I think the uh, colors, yeah, the colors array, I need to add some. So the colors array is actually out of bounds because I didn't specify a color for this body. Uh, so let's scroll up here and let's give it a color. Here's where I give the color to the original ground body. So I'm going to scroll that up and put that next to the uh, ground body we added before. And I'm going to copy that and let's let's put one in here for this ledge body as well. So this one, I'm going to make it a uh, dark gray, I think. Yeah, let's do dark gray. Outline's still going to be white. Uh, so now that should work now that we have a color specified. All right, that looks good. Okay, so that's pretty good. 
In fact, this one, I think I want to move it down a little bit. Uh, let's put it at five on the Y, so five meters up. Okay, good. That looks good. Looks like everything's interacting with it just fine. Um, and then I want to apply some rotation. So before we add the body, uh, so let's go ahead and tell the ledge body that we want to rotate. I just want a small amount of rotation. So let's go ahead. From mono game, there's a math helper that has pi defined. So I'm going to get 2 pi. I'm going to divide that by 20. A little slant. I'll just give it a little slant, and let's see what it looks like. That looks good. Let's go ahead and drop our bodies on there. Okay, and they are sliding down. That looks correct. Um, I actually want it to rotate the other way, so I'm going to make this a negative value, a negative rotation. Um, and then I want to add another one. So this one's on the left side. I want another, another one slanting on the other side. So I'm going to copy this code, and let's just put another sloped value on there. Okay, and it's going to be the same size. Um, it's just going to be on the other side. So it's going to be at a positive 10 for the position. And then I want to move it up a little bit. So let's put this one at 10 as well. So 10, 10. So it's going to go right 10 meters and up 10 meters. And then the rotation, um, I want the same slant, but I want it to rotate the other way. So let's just change this to a positive 2 pi over 20. Let me just call this one ledge body 2, and let's pass it in down here. And then the color, I'm going to make this maybe a dark red. Okay, so now we have two ledge bodies with rotation. Um, the ro I rotated the wrong ledge body, so I basically rotated it back, the first one. So the first one I'm rotating here, and then I rotated it back here. So let's change the ledge body to rotation, and that should change what it looks like. Okay, that looks pretty pretty good. Throw some bodies in here and see what happens. Okay, and everything looks like it's interacting correctly with the static objects. They're kind of funneling on through there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I don't know. I think I want to move these just a tad so they're not so close. So let me drop down um, the first ledge. I want to drop that down a little bit. So we have it at five. Let's drop it down to three meters and let me see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that better. And maybe this top one will make it a little bit shorter. So that one is our second ledge. It's uh, 20 meters wide. Let's make it uh, 15 and just see what that looks like. Yeah, there we go. I like that better. We can zoom out and take a look at it here. All right, so that's it for this video. We have the rotational inertia calculated. So now we can start getting into changing our equation, our physics equation, to now take rotation into effect as well. So what we're going to do now is um, calculate the rotational acceleration and apply that to the rotation of the object based on the inertia as well as the contact points. And we also have a couple new static bodies here to test our engine on as well.